Welcome to Executive Insights. I'm Nishin Liu, Managing Partner with the IT Media Group, a CIO-centric media company. Today, I welcome back a favorite guest of mine, Paul Balak, the retired global CIO from Magna International. Since he announced his retirement in the spring of 2023, Paul has taken on an active executive advisory role working with CIOs and emerging leaders across the industry to guide their leadership journey. Today, we reflect on Paul's remarkable career, his lessons learned driving digital transformation, and his advice for the next generation of leaders. Hi, Paul. I'm so happy to see you. Welcome back to Executive Insights. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Paul, last time when I had you on the program, we talked about your remarkable digital transformation journey at Magna International. And I have to tell you that video has become one of the most engaged interview videos of Executive Insights. So congratulations. I think partly because the topic is really resonating with our CIO community, but mostly is due to your practical insights and candid delivery. So no pressure, but you set the bar really high for yourself. Uh oh. <laughs> Since we last talked, you announced your retirement from Magna recently, but between you and I and our listeners, you're not really retired, are you? No, no, I'm doing some uh, part-time consulting and coaching. We'll certainly get to that part, but for a minute, I wanted to reflect on your impressive career of 45 years in technology and leadership. How would you describe your legacy? Well, it's kind of hard to summarize a 45-year career, but I suppose there's one common denominator. I've always been the, the driver of technology-based transformation. I've always been kind of the executive who sits at the intersection of, of technology and business, either envisioning or strategizing or delivering some fundamental change across many domains. I mean, after all, transformation is about defining and justifying change, then making it happen, then making it stick, right? So over the years, I've led numerous transformations, many of which have had quite impactful outcomes, and all of them Certainly lots of lessons learned on how to do them well and all the things that can go wrong. So I suppose in terms of legacy, I'd like to think that I left several organizations better off than when I joined them. I suppose that's the definition of adding value. And I'm just very grateful to have had all the opportunities to do so. I think in my mind, your brand is really the transformation guy and you're kind of that connective tissue between the business and technology. Right. And speaking of transformation, I think it's such a buzzword. And what does it mean, really? I like to get your view on that. And also, what are the implications of transformation for an organization? Well, this question of what a transformation is really is, is, is kind of an interesting one, to your point. I, I think the word is just really overused. And, you know, at the end of the day, what's the real difference between a, an innovative incremental improvement and a true transformation? To me, I think it's just a matter of degree. To me, a, a real transformation is, number one, a comprehensive set of, of actions and programs that result in an order of magnitude improvement in business outcomes. So it's a very wide and very impactful change. And the thing is, to get the extraordinary improvement in business outcomes that result from a transformation, it means that the, the actions and programs have to be extraordinary. So they're typically large, they're expensive, they're complex, they're disruptive, they're risky. Those are the kind of the defining characteristics of, of a transformation. And given that nature, achieving a transformation requires extraordinary capabilities above and beyond sort of the business as usual capabilities. So I'm referring to, for example, executive leadership, organizational change management, risk management, governance, uh, and often the human talent upgrades, both in technology and the business, 
that are necessary in a, in a transformation. All of those capabilities have to come up a level in a transformation. And given what you just said, how about digital transformation? Another catchy phrase, for example. So what should a IT leader be mindful of when driving digital transformation? Well, to me, digital transformation is, is a subset of, of transformation that uses particular digital technologies and perhaps a different mindset that's a, a little bit more agile and a little bit more customer centric and so forth. But you know, transformations in general, I, I think there, there's a long list of, of things that a technology leader has to keep in mind when driving a transformation. And, and to me, certainly in my experience, the actual technology itself isn't, isn't on the top of the list, right? The, the top three things that are on the top of the list to me, and in, in my experience, are number one, clarity and constant communication of the vision of the transformation. So what problem is the transformation trying to solve? Why is it so crucial to the organization to solve that problem? And what's the solution going to look like? So that's number one, sort of clarity and constant communication of the vision. Number two is executive alignment and leadership that just so essential, right? The senior team has to be demonstratively committed and actively involved in the transformation. It can't be something that, you know, those guys in the business are doing. It has to come from the top. And number three, well, transformations are hard, right? Uh, you know, the, the point I made earlier, tra transformations required extraordinary effort. And so a culture of agility, continuous learning and adaptability is really important because transformations are hard. There's going to be new skills that the workforce is going to have to master. There's going to be new business processes or even new business models that have to be established. So there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be twists in the road, and you have to be able to learn and absorb and, and roll with the punches. So th those are the biggies to me. I love how you break it down to the three key points, the clarity and consistency of communication, the alignment of leadership, and creating a culture of conditions that would facilitate and enable the transformation efforts. Right. Now that you're sort of retired, and we alluded to that at the beginning of this conversation, you're not as involved as a full-time global CIO with Magna International. However, you're in high demand and in your current capacity as an executive advisor with Ernst & Young and also as a coach and mentor still with Magna, you're working with CIOs across the industries as well as emerging leaders. So this is a two-part question. Part one is, what do you consider that are key competencies for a modern CIO? And part two is, what's your approach and methodology to help guide them on their leadership journey to get to where they need to be? Well, that's another sort of complicated answer. I, I think what drives the answer is that the job of a modern CIO has evolved considerably. Right, driven by the widened scope of technology management and now the, the specialization required to get your hands around all that scope. So 15 years ago, we had a chief information officer who managed all the technology and, and life was simple. Now organizations have not only a chief information officer, but more and more have a chief technical officer, a chief data officer, a chief digital officer, a chief information security officer, a lot of chiefs, all of whom are addressing specific specialized domains of technology management. And I think that evolution in job scope of the modern CIO has resulted in an evolution of the competencies to do the job. So when I'm asked to contribute to a, a CIO role definition or, or, or talk to a CIO about, you know, what, what are the, you know, the key competencies, I have a model of uh, about 10 distinct key competencies that I talk about. In an interview like this, I, I can't elaborate on all of them, but I will say that only one of the 10 is talent for technology, right? Because the others are about the long list of soft skills and executive competencies that, that I believe a modern CIO has to demonstrate to be successful. 
right? And, you know, alluding to some of the, the comments I've already made, skills like communication and influencing and collaborating and planning and change management, financial management, risk management, all of those, all of those skills are the essential skills. It's, it, to me, it's not about technology anymore. The CTO can worry about technology. In terms of approaches to acquire those soft skills, my advice to the next generation, because I think that's that's where advice and coaching is is going to be most impactful, is, is on the next generation. And my advice is to to get yourself involved in in career circumstances and and opportunities where you get to expose and exercise those key soft skills. It's not good enough to just know them or listen to a guy like me and have them rattle it off. They, they need to be exercised. And even if you know one has those soft skills innately, getting real world experience and putting them to work is, is the essential part of the game. You have to exercise these in, in live situations and know that sometimes you're going to fail, but there's, there's a learning curve involved there just like anything else. Sage advice, well said. So, Paul, now that you have to admit you have a little bit more free time on your hands, what are you most looking forward to? Well, I, I plan to spend uh, quite a bit more time in, in Arizona. It's a favorite part of the world for me. Uh, we're in the process of setting up a, a second winter home there. And uh, I've got a grandson who's almost two now. And so I'm kind of looking forward to spending some quality time with him and hopefully some others if if we're so blessed. Oh, amazing. And I know you've been doing some traveling as well. You just right. came back from Croatia and Barcelona, which right. I'd love to uh, hear more about after this interview. Right. So thank you so much, Paul, for your time. Great insights once again. My pleasure. Thank you. You've been watching another episode of Executive Insights by the IT Media Group. I'm Nishin Liu. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please check out other content on our YouTube channel, including CIO Roundtable Conversations and Executive Insights Interviews. And don't forget to subscribe.